So let's watch this um, this video growing up Aztec and let's finish the live stream there. You know, is it cool with you guys? I would imagine so. So growing up Aztec by Invicta. It's a video that I've been wanting to watch for a long time. It was recommended by Jahira. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's I guess, you know, I'm Mexican. So growing up Aztec again, it sort of relates uh, to your complete chaos. Yeah, true. I mean, it was so, it was a really beyond chaos, though. It almost started a war between the UK and Russia. But, uh, yeah, let's watch this video. Oh. Welcome to How They Did It, a show where we take a look at the daily lives of our ancestors. Today we'll be joining yeah. the children of history to see what it was like growing up Aztec. My ancestors. A huge thanks to our sponsors, The Great Courses Plus, for making this video possible. The birth of a child was a momentous occasion for an Aztec family. Revered really? midwives would be present to provide their expertise and guidance in delivery. These women also carried out many of the important rituals accompanying a birth. When the baby emerged, the midwife would cut the umbilical cord, which would be preserved. Huh. Later, the umbilical cord was to be ritualistically placed in the hearth for a girl or on the battlefield for a boy. Presents would also be given to symbolize their future roles in society. Okay. Shields and arrows for boys, Warriors. spindles and weaving instruments for girls. Huh. The baby was then washed and prayed over, while the midwife greeted the infant with a long speech warning of the sorrows and dangers of life. Next, oh. a naming ceremony what was a carried way out where the child was born. bathed under the early morning sunlight of an auspicious day. Babies were given a calendar name based on the date of their first bathing, along with the personal name. Calendar names were derived from the ritual calendar cycle, with each day carrying a number and a sign, such as one crocodile, three rain, and thirteen reed. Each was associated with specific qualities and omens. Typically, a child would be bathed and named four days after their birth, but parents had some leeway to fudge the dates around a bit to get a more favorable day sign. <laughs> no, one, no one gave me a disclaimer when I was born, shake my head. True. I mean, I wish that they told us, you know what? This world is fucked up. Ukraine is going to fight Russia. You know, there's going to be hunger. There's going to be... Uh, economic chaos, there's, there's going to be nuclear war, you know. Personal names were less restrictive and typically found inspiration in places or things. Boys might be named after animals, clothing, or personal qualities, while girls often took on more feminine titles. Interesting. Like those of By the way, if you are wondering, which maybe you're not, but in Mexico, we do learn about the basics of Aztec history, but we never learn about this. You know, we don't learn... Uh, how they named the boys or the girls. We don't know um, how, all the rituals. So, you know, they prayed when they were born. They bathed them. They would cut and preserve the umbilical cord. We don't learn this stuff. Uh, many people kind of forget how martial and warlike Aztec society was. True. What up, people? Last Samurai, welcome. Hello. Yeah, I mean, it was an empire, and it was a brutal empire. And they were brutal conquerors and warriors, and it was pretty, like, hardcore. Popular flowers. Once this had been completed, four water rites were performed. The name was shouted out by observers, and a feast was held. In their earliest years, babies would be kept at home and attended to by the family. Parents were very careful. And Mexicans feel closer to the Spaniards or the Aztecs. I guess depends on where you live, but I would say most feel closer to, uh, oh, I, well, I don't know. I would say I feel closer to the Spaniards or the, my Spanish culture, but a lot of people do have a lot of love for the Aztecs. So I'd say probably 50-50, you know, it's, it's like uh, toss, tossing a coin. But maybe the Spanish, to probably the baby. Spanish. Ensuring proper feeding, cleaning, and sleeping were all part of the routine, as well as several more unique considerations. One notable practice was the stretching ceremony. This occurred every four years and involved the pulling of children's fingers, toes, legs, noses, necks, and ears in order to stimulate growth. Other interesting customs include the following. Okay, Babies well... Babies were to be protected from oh, the direct gaze shit. of an elderly person, which was believed to be quite powerful. No one must step over a child or risk stunting their growth. 
If it did occur, the perpetrator must quickly step back over them to undo the effect. There would be no playing outside on days with evil omens, and lost teeth were to be cast into mouse holes to encourage the arrival of permanent teeth. For the next 15 years, children would live at home with their families. During this time, they would be educated by their parents, their relatives, and their local community on how to be a proper Aztec. We will trace their aging by following a child's development year to year. At three years old, children wore simplified versions of adult clothing. Hmm. The boys wore a basic cape without a breech cloth, and girls wore a tunic without a skirt, while both had their hair cut short. Loved your reactions on the Turkish Century video as a Turkish person myself. Definitely enjoy those. Thank you, man. Love Turkey, love Turkish history. My mom actually has been watching a lot of, uh, reading a lot of Turkish, well, Ottoman history, and has been watching a lot of Turkish soap opera. So, yeah, definitely we love Turkey in this household. Um, are there any people that have gone back to worshipping as the gods? Like how some people in Europe have gone back to worshipping the old gods? Uh, no, not really. I mean, maybe, but definitely not in the same level of Europe, you know? It's insane to think that this is how your ancestors lived. It's, it's fun to watch, for sure. For now, they had no chores and could play much of the day. Nice. The I want to live like home, that. They were increasingly instructed on proper behavior. Soon, children were expected to stop playing in the mud, to greet people properly, to listen attentively to elders, and to eat quietly. Hmm. At four years old, gender differences became more apparent. Girls started to wear a short skirt while boys continued rocking their capes commando style. Yeah. Chores now also entered the equation. Girls began to take on domestic chores like spinning and weaving while boys began to leave the house with their fathers to fetch supplies like water. At four At years, years old? old, girls progressed to longer skirts while boys continued to enjoy their freedom under the hood. Chores became more routine. Girls were taught to use a spindle, and boys returned with heavier supplies like bundles of grass for brooms and wood for fireplaces. Damn, at five years old, At dude. six years old, their chores became more involved. Girls spent extensive time learning to weave and spin alongside their mothers, and boys made their first trip to the marketplace to collect supplies. At seven years old, boys finally put on a dang breechcloth. Mm -hmm. Girls carried out tasks on their own under the supervision of their mothers, and boys ventured out on the lake to learn fishing and observe the activities of the boatmen. From 8 to 14 years old, mm. the responsibilities of chores continued to increase year by year. Now, however, these activities started to be accompanied by physical punishment for bad behavior rather than mere verbal scolding. Magwai spines, for instance, were used to prick children who showed excessive lying, negligence, idleness, wild behavior, or other indiscretions. Holy Children shit. Children might also be subjected to the acrid smoke of burning chili peppers or the effects of being stretched what? out over damp ground all day. While these punishments may seem extreme, it's important to realize that they were not used every day. Their presence, however, doesn't... Fuck that, dude. Damn. That's pretty brutal. Uh, I mean, we said that Aztec's uh, culture and civilization was brutal, but damn. I find pre-Spanish conquest America so interesting. They are, they are, they're very interesting. They're not my cup of tea, but they're definitely a, very interesting. Nomadic history is one of my favorite things to learn. Definitely a lot to discover from that. True, absolutely. Foremost ...of the high standards parents placed on their children. I mean, this is fucked up. Too. This was in keeping with Aztec society, which believed in obedience, honesty, politeness, respect, moderation, mm. modesty, and energy. I guess that's cool. ideals. An Aztec's 15th birthday was an important one. According to the Codex Mendoza, it was at this point that boys and girls would begin their full-time formal educations at school. Interesting. However, I want to be sure to note that other sources claim that some individuals, especially nobles, would have been introduced to the schooling system at an earlier age. Mm. After all, education was an important pillar of Aztec society. In fact, attending these institutions was compulsory. This idea of universal schooling is actually quite modern. There were several yeah. different types of schools available. These were separated into two groups, one for boys and one for girls. Makes the sense. The boys were educated on matters related to their various societal roles and would take up residence in the school dormitories. The girls were mostly educated on matters related to the domestic sphere and would return home in the evenings. Past this gender divide, there would be another form of separation based on class. Mm. The Kalmakak was for elites, 
while the Tel Pushkali was for commoners. The Kalmakak was a religious temple where youths would be taught to occupy the highest positions of authority in society. Admission was generally reserved for those of noble birth, but it is believed that boys from the merchant class or gifted commoners might be received as well. While in school, students would dress as novice priests with black face and body paint. Advanced students black are depicted face. with additional red marks by their ears, a stylistic representation of typical auto-sacrifice wherein one would prick one's ears to draw blood. Lessons here were taught by wise elders or priests and covered a wide range of topics. These uh, I think I also read somewhere that the Aztecs, before founding their empire, were a nomadic tribe from northern Mexico who migrated down to central Mexico. I'm not entirely sure about that. I'm not sure if they were... Well, honestly, I'm... Honestly, I, I don't know. I'd have to check on that. Included religion, history, painting, music, law, astrology, astronomy, warfare, and a high form of language. Some of the students in the Kalmakak specialized in craftsmanship, starting off as an apprentice and eventually reaching the status of master. Between lessons, oh. students would continue oh. their chore work and assist. Okay, well, the last samurai, 10 year, thank you. Keep up the good content, bro. Love it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the donation. Thank you, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it, man. And yeah, for sure, I'll definitely keep up. Uh, definitely, we'll keep improving, making original content soon. So thank you so much. Really, really appreciate the dono, man. Thank you so much. I even became a little duties. blush and everything. I don't know if much you can see, but be spent I'm blush. Grounds, fetching firewood and decorating or maintaining holy sites. Many religious practices would also be observed such as the nightly burning of incense in the four cardinal directions. Novices would also trek to the mountains with priests for penance and sacrifice. Additionally, elder boys had a chance to accompany the warrior priest to the battlefield. This was all done War with a was a huge part of the Aztec society. Students were expected to perform daily tasks diligently, show proper manners, fast routinely, and remain chaste. Breaking these rules would result in strict punishment, which might even include execution. Damn, what? The Telpoch Kali schools for commoners the school were more for commoners. than their elite counterparts and were present in every neighborhood. Their primary focus was military training. Here, students would be taught courage, order, discipline, and battle skills by respected elders and military veterans. This might be done with general physical tasks such as public work projects or through specialized lessons on martial arts and weapons training. Direct exposure to the Aztec military in action was also a key feature of their education. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the Aztec Empire started where now is Mexico City, right? Modern Mexico City. And they would expand to most of central and parts of southern Mexico. So in reality, they were an empire focused on conquests. So that's why you will see that a lot of uh, the boy tasks or the, the tasks for men would be strictly focused on war. You know, because that's what the thing, you know, they had a straight up uh, focus on the military and conquest. And that's why the Spanish couldn't defeat the Aztecs so easily because they were warriors and they pushed back. And the Spanish had to ally with other uh, Mexican uh, tribes to defeat the Aztecs. So the Spanish really didn't defeat the Aztecs alone. The, Aztec ha the Aztecs had so many enemies that... Uh, eventually, those enemies would come bite them in the ass later when the Spanish arrived. And the Spanish, together with those tribes, would defeat the Aztecs and Tenochtitlan would fail. You know? Uh, that's fairly common. The, the Ottomans started out as a tribe in the former Eastern Roman Empire that became more technologically advanced than the other tribes and managed to conquer their neighbors. True, that would happen. No problem, brother. You definitely deserve it for you. Oh, thank you so much, man. I really, really appreciate every bit of support, you know? And I really just appreciate it. Youths would first participate in campaigns by accompanying troops to the battlefront as porters. In time, they would have had a chance to distinguish themselves, making their way into battle and potentially advancing to- The Mayans are also another interesting civilization. If I'm not wrong, I think there are still people related to them living in southern Mexico. Yeah, they are probably one of the largest uh, native ancestries in Mexico. And there's a lot of people that speak that language. So there's not language that really is called Aztec, but there is a lot of people that speak Mayan especially like in the, in the Yucatan Peninsula. And actually there was a point in time 
where uh, the Aztecs and the Mayans could have met, you know? They could have uh, met and probably have war to control in Mexico. Of course, that didn't happen. The Spanish arrived and, you know, they never met. Or uh, they knew of each other, sure, but they never, like, had a lot of contact with each other. Same for the Franks, for example. They, they only used to be a Germanic tribe, exactly. To the various ranks in the army. It happens a lot. The Italian, right? Did not come to the complete exclusion of all other academic interests. As with the school for nobles, the school for commoners would also introduce students to various aspects of Aztec religion, culture, and law. The quality of education law, yeah. would likely they had law. from they had like school, taxes, but most likely lagged behind that of the nobility. This more relaxed teaching style also manifested when it came to school punishment. While all students were expected to adhere to specific rules and customs, the commoners were not as strictly punished for breaking them as compared to their more elite peers, who were held to a much higher standard. With all this activity taking place within each individual school, we should not forget that there would actually be many institutions within a city, all of which interacted with their neighbors. School rivalries were a real thing. This was especially the case between the noble and commoner and institutions. And if, if you can see a lot of these names, uh, Coyoacán, Iztapalapa, Chapultepec, these are all names that you can find in Mexico City. So this is all... Mexico City, right? Like this is modern Mexico City. Of course, there's no water, right? Mexico City. If you've heard Mexico City was built on a lake, this is the lake. This is the lake Mexico City was built upon. Each of which were associated with separate gods. Great prestige could be had through the ball game competitions or mock battles. Specifically during the third day of Atemosli, when the mock battle of Chonchayot was held. The Kalmykak and Telpoch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the Ottomans managed to achieve stability whilst other tribes weren't as stable and basically played crusader kings, schemed, etc., and uh, married the right people to gain more influence and power. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Valley youth would square off with bound bundles of staves. If a Kalmykak youth was caught, his body was rubbed with ground up magwai spines as a sort of itching powder. If a Telpoch Kali youth was caught, his ears, shoulders, chest, and thighs could be pierced with magwai thorns. Yes, exactly. Some Spanish said Tenochtitlan looked like Venice because they could not believe it. Yeah, they had a lot of canals. And if you saw the diagram on the lake, there were, there were a lot of ocean canals. Well, not sorry, not ocean, lake canals, right? Uh, and they really specialized uh, building crops on the lakes. Uh, I, I forgot the name, but they built crops on the lakes. Uh, and it was like a huge innovation for the time. The Aztecs really looked like the Romans of the Americas. Probably they were, you know, they were really uh, advanced. Each group and they developed to drive uh, laws a base, a temple and, and taxes, which the winning side. The militarism reminds me of food. Prussia. Boys and girls Interesting comparison. Yeah, I could see that. Pillow fights with the boys throwing grass filled sacks and the girls chasing after them with cactus thorns. At the end of the day, though, differences would be put aside at the House of Songs where communities came together to sing and dance the night away. Huh. Much socializing was to be had nice. and many lifelong friendships were formed. In their late teens, Aztec children would graduate from school and enter society as adults. For girls, this meant remaining in the temples or getting married and continuing to work in a more domestic environment. For the boys, graduation typically meant the beginning of their careers as warriors. As such, they would be mobilized for campaigns when necessary and return to typical day jobs such as farming, fishing, or craftsmanship while at peace. I'm really happy to have been able to share the experiences of growing up Aztec. Traditional history lessons focus yeah, so much absolutely. on the activities of adults Damn. that we never get a sense of what it's like to actually be a kid in the past. We cherish our own childhood so much that it's only fair we do the same with our ancestors. I think this exercise is particularly important with people like the Aztecs who otherwise find themselves so easily passed over when it comes to more flashy topics like sacrifice and warfare. True. If you'd like to find out more about the Aztecs and other Mesoamerican civilizations, you can do so through our sponsor, The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus, that now I think it's Wondrium. You know, it has a different name. So yeah, whatever, right? Uh, Bulgaria, Byzantium, and Serbia were first hit by the, by the plague, while the nomadic Turks uh, much less, and also fought each other and themselves. The Ottomans first came to the Balkans as mercenaries. The, basically, the Ottomans took Adrianople when Byzant the Byzantines couldn't pay them. Exactly, the Byzantines, the Byzantines had so much uh, debt that time, they couldn't pay it back. 
that was interesting. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially, you know, as a Mexican, there's some things that I didn't knew or some things that I did knew and could add a little bit of context. Either way, it was super cool. Probably going to share it with some friends and family members, to be honest. Like, look, this is what... Could I say our people? I don't know. By the way, guys, I found there is an ancestry test, a DNA test that ships in Mexico. And I could, like, do it and send it back. So I really want to do that. I don't know where I'm going to buy it, but probably soon enough. I don't know. Maybe between the next month, I'm going to be buying a DNA test and for the first time in my life. And I don't know what's going to uh, show up. But probably around 30 percent i calculate it's gonna be native american probably aztec maybe who knows uh, although maybe it's gonna show some interesting things you know i think that is cool 